Okay guys, what's up? I'm Zach. I'm back with another vlog here. Vlog, whatever you want to call them these days. Um, I just went out to eat at this fabulous restaurant, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a walk back to my car and you guys can watch me. Uh, well, I mean, I've had a great day. Woke up. Whoa, what was that? What, what was that? Hey, it's just chill, man. I'm just what? doing this chill right now. It's just chill. It's just chill right what now. What the f are you doing here, I Brian? miss you, buddy. You're giving me a hug. You're a great guy, man. We are going to do a truck. My truck? My truck died here. We're going to do a thing. Um, Just let me bring you home. I don't know, man. Like, we're all right. So, right. Today's episode is about crystal meth, and where the f can I get it? Chill! Math! Anybody? I just need a little time, you know. This is the f Go to the store to fucking finish it! Whoa, 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 whoa! I'll get you tired if you find some meth, man. Let's do it right now. I'll do it. Let's do it. That's a good tire. It's a good tire, man. You can do it. You could sell it. Yeah, let's do it! We're gonna sell a tire and get some yeah. crystal meth! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Public Access and Chill. How are we feeling tonight? All right, please join me in welcoming the host of the show, Brian Bargain here. Yeah, all right, how we doing tonight, everybody? Enthusiasm, I like that. Thank you so much for coming to another episode of Public Access and Chill. Uh, I'm very hungover right now. Anyone else? Monday night? <laughs> Most of the audience is also hungover. Sweet. That's probably how we sold tickets. Sweet. Uh, I'm a big whiskey guy. Anyone else? Big whiskey guys. <laughs> All right. I've been, I don't know, though. I really love whiskey. I only drink primarily whiskey, but I've been, I've been messing more and more with red wine. You guys like red wine? I didn't know how awesome red wine is. I like that. It makes me feel pretty and stuff. Like, And the boners. It's like the opposite of whiskey. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But wine's weird. No one ever warned me about how weird wine is. Because you drink like a bottle of wine and you are good. You feel good. And then you have one more glass from that next bottle and you are f Literally that one glass, you go from like slow dancing by the fire with your fiance to at the McDonald's drive through like, I'll tell you what's wrong with the government. <laughs> now get me a McDouble, you capitalist pig. But whiskey's cool, though. Whiskey's where you get the cool stories. You don't get those cool stories with wine, you know? Like, whiskey's like, I was chugging a fifth of Jack, and then we went to the strip club, and then I did coke off this knife that looks like a hot dog. <laughs> you never hear that with wine, you know? Like, oh, man, I was f***ed up. I had four bottles of this beautiful 2009 Merlot. And then I stole my friend's EpiPen so I could drive home. I was watching the news recently. Last and time I, I get drunk at this beehive. Crashed into a cruise ship. Uh, that cockpit I'll really take the one the laugh deck. for that one. That deserved it. But I, I'll drink anything, honestly. Just, just not tequila. I can't, I can't do tequila. Like, I'll slap people and stuff. I don't like it. No bueno. Spider by Derek Santos. I recently met a man named Spider on the bus. And I was like, how did you get the nickname Spider? And he said, because I crawl into your mouth while you're asleep. That was the scariest school bus driver I ever had, you guys. Last time I, bought, I drank tequila, I went to Taco Bell. I bought a burrito, gutted it, and tried to roll a blunt in it. Like, I was very ambitious with my blunterita. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's it for jokes. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, my last co-host, Dan Brown, seems to have died in an octopus-related fire. So uh, please help me and welcome the new co-host of Public Access and Chill, Patrick McKinstry, everybody.
Oh, he did it before me. Yeah, all right, we did it. Wow. Sweet. Yeah, so what's up, Patrick? You know, I'm pretty great. I actually got some good news Is back this? there. And okay, is this going to take long oh, or anything? Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought that we were... <laughs> That's great stuff. Um, how many dumps did you take last month? I'm sorry? How many dumps did you take last month? Poops? Yeah. I, how would I know that? January 2018, I took 50 dumps on the dot. 50? I'm proud of those numbers. How would you know that? <laughs> well, we actually have a slideshow of all those, and we're going to check those out, and we'll be right back. Some pretty great stuff, right? <laughs> was, All right. Wow. Well, that's fun because you know what? Today's episode's actually about toilets, everybody. Yeah. We love toilets, and honestly, they're underappreciated luxury. Come on, can you imagine sitting in a hole? A hole. I mean, I just do that for fun usually. But we actually went out on the streets to talk to more people about toilets, so we're gonna check that out. We'll be right back. Stick or <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Research has found that meat is the number one cause of global warming. Well, let this reporter say that even if it is, I don't care. I like the way it tastes. I don't like it bloody, just a warm pink center. But that's my preference. Well, when they came up with this conclusion, researchers took every aspect of the production meat, including the transportation of the product to the consumer. So what they're saying is it isn't the internal combustion engine causing the pollution. It's the reason why you're driving that's the cause of the pollution. In this reporter's opinion, that is highly misleading. But if that's the game you want to play, if you want to consider the reason why you're driving as the cause of global warming, meat isn't even close. I've driven 10 minutes for my favorite burger. I have driven over 5 hours for a piece of ass. I want to see a slogan on the side of a bus that says, Pussy is the number one cause of global warming. And I don't care, because I like the way it tastes. I don't like it bloody, just a warm pink center. That's my preference. Back to you, Jim. And we're back. Nailing it this time. All right, tonight we have a very special guest. We have a sales rep from a brewery here to talk about some of their awesome products. Please help me welcome to the show, Liz Jensen, everybody. Hi. How you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for joining the show. Now, uh, what's the name of your company that you represent? Artists and Beverage Cooperative. We are a worker-owned co-op that we exist in Greenfield, Massachusetts. We make the fine product that you can get in Connecticut called Ginger Libation. Ginger Libation, now mm -hmm. is that made directly out of ginger? It is, it's pineapple juice, ginger, lemon, and lime. It's 9% alcohol and gluten-free. Damn, we get f***ed up tonight. What? Now, unfortunately, legally, my uh, correctional officer says I can't drink on the show, but I've heard great things. Uh, Patrick, you tried some. How was it? You know what? I don't even remember. It was so great. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Yeah. Now, you said you're located out of where? Greenfield, Greenfield Massachusetts? Greenfield, Massachusetts. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what do you, what's the best thing about being in Greenfield? The ginger libation. <laughs> Nailed it. This one. Um, How did you feel about uh, Joe Costa's role in Oedipix Rex? in the Greek tragedy? Uh, um, underrated. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Solid Jocasta answer. Yeah. Um, now, do you guys have any other products that you want to plug or talk we about? We do. We make kombucha. Are you familiar with kombucha? What did you just call me? A kombucha. What's that? It's a probiotic health drink. It's fermented tea. It tastes like vinegar and fruit. So there's booze in it, though? No booze. Then what's alcohol the point? Alcohol-free, yeah. No alcohol? I you don't know. Is it like it wine? It makes you poop a lot. Oh, that's great, because today's episode is about toilets, everybody. Wow. I, I took a dump during commercial breaks. Did you? Yeah. You didn't smell it? Right there. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to plug for the show or anything? Um, no, just come get ginger libation. Ask your package stores or your bars or your restaurants and tell them that you want ginger libation. Sweet. Um, how, many, how many dumps did you take last month? Um, there's 31, 31 probably. Days? Uh, I, I'm or a, dumps? Dumps. One a day? I'm a pooper day person, yeah. Oh, man. I love to have that. Uh, I'm like seven or nothing. Like, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Help, thank you. Help me log uh, I don't even know.
that's great. Make sure you guys definitely check out uh, the Artisan Beverage. What is it? Cooperative? Cooperative. Is What's that? Uh, it's it's a fancy word for... Like they're all nice to each other there? They smoke a lot of weed. Whoa! Yeah. Also, and every Thursday in March, come to the 121 Club in East Hampton for a shot at theater. It's a locally written show that I produce. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Do you guys get drunk at mm -hmm. it? Very drunk. That's awesome. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Um, we're going to check out a few more clips, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. That was good. Yeah, yeah that, was that was nice. Awesome. And we're back, everybody. Tonight, we have a stand-up comedian here to perform a few jokes for you. Please help me and welcome Andrew Morgan. How's it going, everybody? How are you tonight? It's an honor to be here. This is a great show. Uh, the producer told me to dress nice, and this is the best I could do. I wore my best Goodwill f shirt for you guys. I hope you appreciate that. I don't mind shopping at Goodwill. I don't know if anyone else here does. Uh, but yeah, that's a weird thing to clap for. Um, <laughs> it's not a very enthusiastic thing. I don't mind, obviously. I'm sitting into a microphone in front of a camera. Uh, but I have a little gripe with them. Ever since the economy dip, they think they're a real store all of a sudden because they got more customers but because pe people are poorer. So they think they're now a real retail store. <laughs> and that's not how that works. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day is coming up. They're having a sale at Goodwill. Having a luck of the Irish sale <laughs> at Goodwill. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Macklemore, I've been inside your thrift shop. I'm pretty sure all the luck's run out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's someone still peeing in the book section. I was watching the news recently. I don't think he's and I feeling too that lucky an right actual now. actual airplane crashed into a cruise ship. I was ship. there recently, and, and I was uh, really trying to buy a shirt. Thick. And I went up to the saleswoman, and she had the nerve to offer me the Goodwill Rewards Program. <laughs> That's a real thing. Let's get something straight, Goodwill. You and I have a simple agreement. I mess up my finances so much that I'm willing to buy a dead man shirt at a reasonable price. <laughs> And you provide them. <laughs> the only reward I'm looking for is to one day to be able to shop at Kohl's. <laughs> I got to keep this look up, guys. Uh, I basically look like the assistant manager of every retail store I've ever been to. <laughs> I do. I have all the characteristics. This milk toast facade of anger and depression. The confidence of a wounded bird and the sex appeal of vacation in Delaware, just all right here for you guys. <laughs> You're welcome. I do get that a lot, though, when I go to stores and stuff. I was, uh, I was at a bookstore recently, and this elderly woman came up to me, and she was like, excuse me, sir, do you work here? And I was like, no, I'm sorry, I don't work here. And I thought that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> I thought that was the end of the transaction. She even started to walk away, but then she stopped, walked back over, leaned in, and went, well, you look like you work here. <laughs> I was like, you look like you're going to die here. Why are we doing this, lady? <laughs> Escalated quickly. Uh, I did always think I was going to get uh, more play with this body. I did. By your silence, I could see I'm wrong. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I did, because I don't, I don't know much about women. I don't. But the one thing that I'm pretty confident is that ladies love employed, and I look as employed as humanly possible. <laughs> and I know you ladies love employed so much, because if you've ever seen a bachelorette party, the male stripper always has to wear the uniform of another job to do his job. 
They always have to be a police officer, a firefighter, a postal worker. He might as well have to have a W-2 hanging out of his belt just to come up to you ladies. <laughs> I don't get it. Like if he was wearing a wife beater carrying a Doritos Locos taco, you would set him on fire. <laughs> That's what I believe. That's how I was raised. <laughs> I do love the male stripper, though. I think that's an awesome job. They always have, you know, a really good physique and that kick-ass nickname like sexual chocolate or something. Something manly, something cool. I think if I was a male stripper, the best I could pull off is Burger King. <laughs> For two reasons. Number one, I'm never anyone's first choice. And number two, my body's best in just after midnight and a six-pack of beer. So... <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I'm a new parent. Thank you for acknowledging that. <laughs> I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so most of my time is spent on the playground. And I feel like one out of every two times I'm there, I feel like a complete pedophile. <laughs> I'll explain. I was there recently uh, with my daughter, my three-year-old, and uh, there was this ramp in between two playground sets and they had these railings going up. And I thought it'd be a fun game to play with my, my daughter to jump up and put my legs on either side of the railings and she would run through my legs <laughs> like a choo-choo train and I'm a tunnel. It's a very simple game. She had a lot of fun. Uh, and these other kids were watching us do it and they say, hey, mister, uh, could we do that too? And I was like, totally, buddy. It's all about fun. Let's do this. And I, just all these kids running through my legs going back and forth. And they had the time of their life. And I know these kids are having the time of their life because they went over to their mom, who was five feet away from me, and they were like, Mommy, 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 we just did the best thing. That guy over there, he spread his legs, and he went down, and... Strike. Ooh. Yeah, this. What happened? One more time for Angie Morgan, everybody. Let him, thanks for coming. I'm sorry, bud. We'll, uh, we'll validate that parking. Um, well, till next time, folks. Public access and chill.